The NASA archives, we have kind of three basic areas that we collect in. One of them is for aviation and space technology. The second is the organizations and corporations and how they did it. And the third is individuals that made a big contribution to aviation. The archives here at NASA consists of about 17,000 cubic feet of archival materials, about two million photographs, about two million technical drawings, official military documentation, memoranda, personal correspondence, brochures, you name it. We have a lot of women's collections. So I love these collections because I think not only are they great from the technical point of view, but also from social history in general. The archives maintains a spectacular and a very broad expanse. What's inside uh, some of these books are one-of-a-kind documents. Other collections, though, they deal with space side. They deal with other aspects of aviation. The Giuseppe Balanca collection is, is the collected papers of an Italian-American immigrant who came to this country in 1911 and eventually started his own aircraft company. It just runs the, the complete gamut of one man's personal story as, as well as his professional life. The Raymond Brooks collection was one of the earliest collections I processed here. He was an ace, uh, one of the last surviving, if not the last surviving ace. He had five confirmed kills, as they would say back then and also had a very extensive career in aeronautical research with Bell Laboratories. Some of the women's collections that we have here really spanned the decades from 1910s when aviation was really in infancies all the way up until the 50s and the 60s. Some of my favorite collections that the Gelsen Gage project is including is the Ruth Law scrapbook. She was a fascinating individual. She flew 1916 to 1922. Another one of my favorite ones is Louise Thaden, who was a huge aviation star during the 1930s. The German commercial Zeppelin collection is a spectacular collection of primarily scrapbooks and lots of photographs of the use of airships, dirigibles, commonly known as Zeppelins, by the Germans between the uh, turn of the last century and 1937. The New York Airways collection is a corporate collection. This is a collection that encompasses the uh, primarily business records of New York Airways, which was one of the nation's first helicopter airlines. We do have people that come in and use these collections for a variety of reasons, but one reason I'm so happy that this project is including these is that I don't think these collections get used enough because they're so rich in their primary sources that uh, researchers would just have a ball being able to actually look at these. Many people come in here to look at the collection. A lot of them are authors who want to write definitive histories of the First World War from the, from the aviation perspective. You also have a lot of children, teenagers, college kids who are also are doing research papers. I think there's a number of academic disciplines that will be really well served by these collections. I think, you know, just generally technology would be good. I think American history, generally, specifically women's history and social history. And I think the more you get in to these collections, the more you see that there are applications that could be used for even a wider group of historians. I've used personal papers that are in the collection that are extremely useful in my work and my dissertation. Papers dealing with the airline industry, TAT and TWA in particular and Pan Am have been very, very useful to my research. I would use this collection uh, in support of uh, a dissertation, for instance, uh, that I'm completing at the moment. I would also see using this type of archive for conferences, for instance, journal articles, uh, conference papers. I think researchers are going to have a ball with these collections because they can use these primary collections for a whole variety of things, whether it's you know people doing papers or dissertations or projects or using them in the classroom. I think just the possibilities are endless, and I'm so excited that these collections are finally going to get their due. There are many advantages to have collections online makes me as a researcher much more productive and much more efficient because I don't have to travel halfway around the world in some cases to visit archives. It's there, it's online, it be seen. I think for the, for the researcher, one of the major, major advantages of having this is that these collections are being digitized into a product where they are including other collections, similar collections from repositories all over the world. So by indexing and making them searchable, it really gives such a great context, a very rich context for our collections when you see it with, along with all these other collections all over the world. And for the researcher, that's just indispensable.